Welcome to LeapFrog BI Academy course CT110, Stage Components. In this course, we're going to first define a stage component. Then we're going to demonstrate creating a profile, which we'll later use to create our stage component. And we'll also be talking about project statistics. Now, prior to taking this course, it will be helpful if you uh, take BD100, 110, and 120 which is where we talk about the development workflow uh, in, within LeapFrog BI. And also we set up a, uh, a dimensional, basic dimensional model and a data flow diagram to support that dimensional model. We'll be creating assets uh, in this course that are based on our uh, data flow diagram in BD120. All right, so to get started, let's just define a stage component. A stage component has one purpose, and that is to uh, move data from a source system to a controlled destination. So uh, after we create a stage component and we deploy and execute that component, that's exactly what it will do. It will move data from a source system that we select based on our profile, uh, and then it will place that data within our destination, so in a database table within our destination. Now along with moving that data we have the option to define how we're going to incrementally extract data from the source system and we'll be talking about that along with project statistics in just a moment. So to get started let's just jump over to a browser here where we've navigated to LeapFrog BI. I've already logged in and I'm going to go to the stage component area. I'm going to create a new stage component and just like all components, I have a set of templates here available for me to begin working with. I'm not going to take the time right now to go through all of these uh, template types. Uh, we're going to be basing our um, uh, example here on our uh, AdventureWorks 2012 sample database, which is stored in a SQL Server uh, uh, instance. So we're going to be using this stage using SQL Native Client 11 provider. You can see there are other provider uh, types available, uh, OLADB, Excel, there's flat file, there's uh, FTP collections, multi-file stage, REST APIs. There's quite a few different ways we can uh, stage data. For now, let's just focus on this stage using SQL Native Client 11. Now, I also want to point out that, I, that what I'm going to present here is one of two ways that we can stage data. This is the manual method. There's also a, uh, a simple um, a utility you can download that will automate much of what we're going to be presenting in this course, which is very helpful if you have many uh, uh, source objects that you want to stage. Okay, so we've decided we're going to be staging using our SQL Native Client 11 provider. So I'm going to just download this uh, profile template and I'm going to place it on my desktop for now. I'll just leave the name just like it is here, S1000. All right, now I am going to navigate over to my SQL Server development tools where I have a project here uh, where I'm going to be creating my profiles and I'm just going to add that package uh, to my existing uh, project here. So I'll place that on my desktop. This is what I want. Say OK. And as soon as this opens up, we'll be ready to define the details of our stage component. Now, what we're doing right now is we're going to be profiling our source system. It's a very simple process. All we really need to do here is point our connection in this package to our source system and we also need to provide a SQL statement that is going to define which records exactly we're going to be extracting from the source system. The reason we're doing this is so that we can ensure that we have a known good starting point when we start working in LeapFrog BI. All right so before we provide the information let's just take a quick look at what we're going to be building. So this is the dimensional model that we're working off of. In this course, we're just going to base our uh, example on this dim promotion uh, object here. So if we take a look at our data flow, 
and I move over to my dim demo, dim promotion data flow diagram, I can see that I'm using a profile which is extracting data from special offer. I look at my shape data on that. It's we have that special offer here, and I also can see that I'm incrementally extracting data based on a modified date in that uh, special offer table. So now if I move over to Management Studio and I look at my special offer table, which is here, select uh, all records or top 1,000 on that real quick, and I can see that, okay, great, this is what I'm going to be extracting, and I'm going to be collecting all records uh, that are newer than what I've collected in the past. So I'm just going to make a simple change here. I'm just going to take off this top 1000 and I'm going to take off the database name. I'm also going to, let me just set my database here. There we go. I'm just going to add in here, I'm going to say where modified date is greater than, and I'm just going to put a date in here. It doesn't really matter what it is, just some date. So what I'm doing with that where logic is I'm just providing a placeholder that's going to allow me to uh, determine how I'm going to incrementally, incrementally extract data. Eventually a statistic value is going to replace this. All right, so let's just go ahead and finish our profile here. I'm going to copy this select statement. Moving back over to uh, SQL Server Data Tools, I could just follow the steps here. It says add the source connection to point to the desired source. So I'm going to do that. Point this to my instance here, which is SS2012. And then I'm going to select the database. Test that. Looks good. OK, so now I'm done with step one. Step two, place the SQL to be executed into the source uh, SQL source expression property. Okay, so I'm going to go to my variables here. And you can see I have a SQL source expression. Now I'm going to go ahead and do one thing before I, I jump in here. I know that I have one parameterization that I've created. I'm going to rename this first SQL param1. I'm going to call this modified date. And I'm going to give it a value of 1900 101. Okay, so now I'm going to set up this expression for my SQL source. Move that back in here. Try to make that a little bigger. All right, so in SSIS, I need to put my expressions in quotes like this. So I could run that right now and see what my expression output would look like. Now what I want to do is I want to replace this value with my parameter. So I'm going to replace this value right here with the parameter. So to do that, I need to parameterize. Just go quote, quote, plus, plus. And in here, I'm going to drop in that parameter that I created a minute ago. There we go. So if I run this, it should look exactly the same. OK, so now I have a select statement that's been parameterized. And it says go to the data flow tab. That's great. I'll just jump over to the data flow tab. I'm going to double click on my source just to make sure everything looks good there. Do a preview. That looks great. Look at my columns. That all looks good too. Back to my control flow and everything's good to go. So as one final check here, I'm just going to go ahead and execute this profile package to ensure that I don't get any errors when I when I try to collect that data. That looks good. So it's telling me that all right, I collected my records there, and I'm ready to go. Okay, so now I'm done creating my profile. I'm ready to go to use this profile uh, to create a stage component in Leapfrog BI. So I'm going to go back over to my uh, browser window here, and uh, this is the profile I just downloaded, the profile template. I'm going to use that same template here and I'm going to create my component. So I'm going to give this uh, a name. What was the name of that source table? That was um, special offer. So I'm going to name my stage component the same. And this will be complete. Actually, this will be pending. I'll explain why in just a moment. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse to my component that I just created. And for me, that's located in my CT100 directory. Uh, that would be this guy right here is what we just created. And I'll upload that. So that uploaded successfully. You can see that the profile package detected and parsed successfully, which is great. So my connection. So now I need to select a connection where I'm going to source that information. I could create a new one based on the connection that was built in or that was saved in the package, or I could just use an existing one. We created a connection in CT100 where we talked about connection components, so I'll just go ahead and use that. Now the destination, I don't have an appropriate destination at this point, so I'm going to need to make another connection after I'm done here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this for now. And I'm going to go go ahead and go back over to my connections. I'm going to create a new connection. I want to stage this into my uh, destination database, which doesn't exist yet. I'm going to call this connection my stage connection. It's a very simple way of handling uh, your, your naming by just naming each connection by the component type. Uh, completely up to you how you want to do that. I'm going to set up one connection here. Austex01 2012. And I'm going to call uh, this the database that we're going to be loading Leapfrog BI um, Academy. And I'm going to go ahead and use a schema for this connection called Stage. And I'll leave the rest as it's defaulted. For now, I'm going to leave my test and production definition blank. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back over to my stage component I just created, special offer, and I'm going to edit that now. Now what I want to do is use a destination connection, which I just defined. And I'm going to save that. Okay, so now when I go to my component detail here, I can see that all the source fields have been uh, identified. This is the source fields that I included in my select statement. And I also see that it is to have, have detected the parameter that I included in my profile. Now at this point, we're not actually going to assign a value to this parameter. Let's just take a look at what it uh, what uh, the parameter looks like. So it says source parameter, modified date. That's, that's uh, the name that we gave it within our profile. And it says assign a project statistic to this parameter. We don't have any statistics and we don't want to collect one on our stage component. We're actually going to do that in our PSA component. We'll discuss that in uh, when we get to our PSA component. But for now, uh, let's just quickly define a statistic. A statistic in Leapfrog BI is a value that can be used anywhere within the same project. The component where a statistic is collected will have the statistic value collected after that component executes. So for example, if I chose to collect a statistic on this stage component, which I could do, then I could select a field. And if I wanted to say, uh, I want to know what the maximum modified date is so that I could provide that into a, uh, as a statistic value, then I would just select statistic, collect maximum value, and I would give it an initial value or a default value. Here I would input 1900 or 101 because I want my statistic value to initially be 1900 so that on the first time this, this uh, component runs, I'll, my SQL statement will read just like it did in my profile. It'll say where modified data is greater than 1900. After that component runs, this statistic updates and it might be a value such as uh, 2012 uh, January 01. So the next execution, next time I run that component, I'll be looking for modified dates greater than that value. All right, we'll take a closer look at that once we uh, move over to the PSA component course. But for now, we're all set. We've just created a connection component. Uh, we've set its status on this component to pending because we know we need to come back and assign a value to that parameter. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and create a stage component 
for each of the tables that are required by our data flow diagram um, uh, for all of our objects within our data model here. So uh, specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a connection, or I'm sorry, a, um, a stage component for each of these. So for product, subcategory, category. We already did promotion, so I'm going to go over location, do sales territory. I'm going to, I'm not going to do anything for our dim date because there is no profile. That's just, this is a existing dimension. We will talk about that in the dimension course. And then uh, facts, I'll be creating a stage component for sales order detail and sales order header. I'll be doing this in exactly the same manner as I did in promotion. And when we get done, we will set each of these component uh, with the appropriate status, which will be pending because we have to still go back um, and uh, complete that component's development. All right, so back in a minute. Okay, I've got all the uh, stage component profiles created. Step over here to Visual Studio. You can see I have a different profile created for each of the tables that I want to source data from. Um, and then I've gone over to Leapfrog BI and I've uploaded each of those profiles to create a different stage component for each one. Uh, for example, this is sales order header. You can see that I'm also extracting data from my AdventureWorks connection. Uh, uh, details and then I'm going to place that into my stage connection. Look at the component details once again. I've got all the file, the fields that were uh, included in my SQL statement and then in uh, actually every one of these stage components I have the same parameter. I just have one parameter. Uh, there's no restriction on the number of parameters. I could completely parameterize my SQL statement uh, if I so chose to do so. Um, but I also don't yet have a statistic collection to assign to that parameter. So I've set all of these stage components to a pending status. All right, so that's it. We um, have covered uh, quite a bit of material here in this quick course. Uh, hopefully now you have a pretty good understanding about what a profile's purpose is um, and also how to use a profile to create a stage component. Once again, uh, keep in mind that I've demonstrated the manual method of creating profiles. There's also a utility that uh, makes this a lot faster if you're profiling a lot of, uh, of source tables. See you in the next course.